In this video, we'll explore controlling flows of fluids in a stylized way. We'll look at how the different solvers create different particle flows. And we'll investigate how they work with other X particles dynamic modifiers like the XP Sheeta and XP Foam. In this scene, we have two different simulations happening here, which are creating two very different looks for our stylized product shot. On the left, we have a fluid PBD simulation, which is creating this um, very kind of consistent water particle stream, which uh, flows up the can and then fills it from the top. And then on the right, we have an XP fluid flip simulation, which is um, far, well, they're both unrealistic, obviously, but the um, right hand simulation is far more stylized. Here we have, I mean, effectively, we have a much larger scale fluid sim going on here with um, the, the, the splashes and the turbulent detail and the spray and foam which is being kicked off. Uh, but of course, it's following the same simulation path and it gets towards the top of the can and then fills it from the top. So two very different looks and we're able to achieve these with the various different fluid solvers in the X Particles toolkit. So let's dive into those and see how we can recreate these looks. So let's explore our XP Fluid PBD setup first. Now, if you just want this nice constant stream of water particles without all of that splash detail, then Fluid PBD is going to work excellently in this instance and at low particle counts, it's going to be pretty quick to simulate as well. You're going to get nice consistent results. So how have we set this up? Well, what we have here is our water we can see is, is following the general path of this black helix spline which has just been adapted a little to uh, to come up and come down into the top of the drinks can and if we just scrub through you can see it's, it's pretty much following that path now there are various different ways of getting particles to follow a spline in x particles this method we have used the xp spline flow modifier so what xp spline flow does is it requires a spline, so we've dragged in our helix spline into this window here. And then what happens is it creates these circular handles at various points along the path of that spline. And you can add more or take away handles should you wish. And then each handle has some controls which dictates how it alters uh, the movement and direction of those particles. Um, so it has these controls like towards, along, rotate, controls and attraction. And by tweaking those, you can get different movement along the path of this spline. So that's th the basic setup. We also have an XP Turbulence modifier in this setup, which is just giving us this little bit of kind of wavy motion, which is just adding a little bit of interest. And of course, if we, we animated the spline, you'd get a bit of additional movement, which would look nice as well. But it is the XP Fluid PBD uh, solver which is just giving us this nice fluid motion and, and good kind of particle spacing. So let's switch off that cache and let's switch off the XP Fluid PBD so we can just see the particles being affected by the turbulence and the XP spline flow modifier. So the particles come out, the turbulence is affecting them, but also the spline flow is encouraging to move, uh, them to move around this spline. But you can see, look, straight away, without our PBD solver, they're all separating out, and obviously we don't have a very good stream of particles. If we take off the turbulence, that stream of particles will be far more cohesive, but you can see it's not going to look like a nice, natural, fluid body but it's still following the path of that spline. So just by introducing our XP Fluid PBD, it does its fluid calculations. It gets those particles to kind of separate, but they'll also be attracted to one another as well. And the result is that we get a nice kind of fluid motion moving up this, um, moving up this spline. Now, you can see that they've broken up 
somewhat and we've now got kind of water droplets and that's because now that our simulation is live our turbulence is set very very strong 61 strength is enough to separate these into separate water droplets now that may be a look that you want but we're not getting that nice kind of contiguous stream of water because the, the the turbulence is too strong it's splitting it up so if we bring that back down to a manageable level of say 10 which is what it was at when we cached you'll see that the the fluid pbd solver is able to keep those particles together and space nicely and there we've got our nice continuous stream of fluid so the fluid pbd version is very quick to set up very quick to simulate and it can be adjusted and we can animate the spline and, and do other things to further manipulate the path of that fluid. But we can get that to move along any spline. So it may not be just a helix spline. It could be a logo spline. It could be some text, uh, anything that you desire. But let's say that you prefer that more stylized look and you actually want this to look more like a torrent of water firing up that spline. Well, what we need is much more angry turbulence and we need to be able to get some foam and spray going as well. But we've already discovered that if we merely up our turbulence, our fluid PBD isn't able to, to, to keep those fluid particles together. It's separating out and it's becoming these individual little kind of globules of water which are still following the spline, but it isn't the look that we want. So the tool that we're going to use to get this look that we want better works with either XP Fluid Effects or XP Fluid Flip. And that is the XP Sheeter tool which we've used in previous videos so let's just deactivate our xp fluid pbd system and we're going to move on to the x particles fluid effects system now this is exactly the same setup and we can see that we have the same thing going on this is cached but here we have got our particles moving in a much angry way. They're being moved around by that really strong turbulence, but they're managing to stay as a contiguous stream of fluid. And the reason they're able to stay is if we have a look at our object manager, we have an XP sheeter object, and that's filling in the gaps and creating new particles. So let's go to our cache tag. Let's just switch those off. We'll switch off our foam. So we're just going to look at our fluid particles. And we'll also switch off our XP sheeter. Let's switch that off too. So now if we hit play, this is running live. And what we have is our fluid particles. And they're moving around our spline flow, similar to the way in which they were with the fluid PBD. But they have a very strong turbulence. And that turbulence is managing to split this fluid apart, this string that we're getting some holes in that, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do, let's reactivate our XP sheeter. And the XP sheeter will create new particles if two particles move away from each other in a way that satisfies the various settings that we select in the sheeter for um, size, density, speed, etc. So with the sheeter active, if we hit play, you can see that we're getting that same noisy movement. The turbulence is doing its job. The spline flow is getting the particles to move around the path of that spline. But where the turbulence was splitting this fluid stream, the sheeter is keeping it by adding more particles. So we're getting that be best of both worlds. We're getting this really angry, heavily turbulent scene but the sheeter is managing to kind of keep this together. And of course, we can adjust those sheeter settings to be more aggressive, to fill more particles if we're getting too big a holes. So once we're happy with the shape of this very noisy water going on here, we're now able to add that extra detail by including some foam. So we'll activate our foam um, object here. Now, of course, the foam uh, requires 
its own emitter. So we have a spray emitter set up. And this is analysing the way in which the particles are moving around as part of this fluid mass. And if they're creating the, the correct crest angles and the correct kind of um, air pressures as they're moving against each other, then foam and spray particles will be created. So if we hit play we will see that we're starting to get these white foam particles. So let's just make our water particles invisible. And you can see, so the water particles are still solving, obviously, because that's what's generating the foam and spray. But here we go. Look, you can see we're um, creating these nice spray particles, which is going to give us this incredible amount of detail in this finished simulation. So what you can see here is one thing happening which I haven't explained yet. We've got our foam particles which are escaping the simulation and they're kind of firing offwards as they're coming around this corner. Look, some of them are maintaining their uh, direction and speed and flying off before they are killed and that's giving us some nice kind of splashing effects. Now, the way that we've achieved that is we have uh, um, adjusted a setting in the spline flow. So if we just have a look at our original spline flow, which is the one affecting our fluid here, you can see that there is a fall off setting and we have no fall off set in this curve. It's just at one the whole time. And what that means is, is that the strength of the force within this handle is the same from the middle of the circle all the way out to the edge. There's the same force moving those particles. However, what we want to say is with just the way it's affecting the foam, if the foam gets towards the edge of this handle, we don't want it to have as much strength, which will mean the foam is able to escape that path direction of the spline. So the way we've done that is we've created a new spline flow just for the spray and we've adjusted the fall off. So look, this what this fall off curve is saying is at the centre of each handle, it will have just under 0.5% strength. And then as it's going towards the edge of each handle, the strength of that force is getting less and less and less to actually at the end, at the, right at the edge of the handle, it has no strength and that foam isn't going to follow the path of that spline at all and it's going to escape. And then what we have said is that the water emitter particles should not be affected by the spray spline flow. And the way we've done that is look in the modifier tab of that emitter, we have dragged in the spline flow spray and put the minus sign so the water particles won't be affected by this spline flow. And conversely, in our spray emitter, we have dragged in the, the water spline flow and said don't affect it. We have said don't be affected by the sheeter. We don't want our foam particles sheeting as well, otherwise it'll get out of control. And we've also, there's an extra turbulence modifier that we have positioned um, to add a little bit more detail as the particles enter the can. And we have said don't affect the spray particles with that modifier as well. So with all of that linked together, if we then reactivate our caches, this is the look that we get. And we're getting this really nice angry particle stream making its way up. It's being held together because we're creating new particles with the sheeter so it keeps its form. And then it's entering our can. And we're getting this really nice detailed look. So that's how we would set that up using XP fluid effects. Let's just make that one invisible and deactivate it as well because we also have an XP fluid flip system. Now, this is going to work very similar to the previous one. The only difference, obviously, is we have an XP fluid flip solver in there rather than an XP fluid effect solver. And, of course, that means that the simulation must take place within the XP fluid flip domain. And we can see our bounds here. And the only other difference in this than the previous setup with XP Fluid Effects is this. We must go to our Fluid Flip domain. And in the Emitter tab, we don't want the spray particles to be included in the Fluid Flip Solve. 
Um, that's a very important step to make when using foam with XP Fluid Flip. You need to make sure that it is not going to be calculated within the Fluid Flip Fluid calculation. But everything else is the same as it was. We still have the sheeter, we have the foam, we have the various different spline flow uh, modifiers, one for the water and one for the foam particles. And you'll see that we get this very nice uh, animation. Now, this is going to look different to the fluid effects because obviously fluid flip calculates its fluid differently and we're getting really nice kind of rotating splashing detail with the fluid flip very nice look and there it is filling our can so let's just jump back to our comparison shot so you can see on the left we have our pretty quick to simulate fluid PBD option, which gives us this very nice constant stream of water uh, particles. But with the PBD method, we aren't able to put in lots of turbulent strength because it splits apart that fluid stream and um, we have to keep it at a lower turbulence levels so we don't get to that point but we can harness the splitting of those fluid particles if we use it with XB Fluid FX or XB Fluid Flip because with those two solvers, we can use the XP Sheeter to fill in those gaps within the fluid stream and then we can get some really nice detail using the XP Foam dynamic modifier as well. And there you can see that that is for two very different simulation looks for these kind of heavily stylized product shots.